Okay. Uh, my name is Nico Franks. I'm editor of C21 Kids. Uh, I'm a journalist covering the children's TV industry, and I've got a great panel of Irish producers, the great and the good. Um, to my right, I have Dara O'Connell, uh, who's currently creative director at the Nine Story Media Group and obviously co-founded Brown Bag Films. Uh, to his right, I have Rob Cullen, uh, the founder and creative director of Boulder Media. To his right, I have Alex Shearwood, who is the co-founder and creative director of Giant Animation. And to his right, I have Neve uh, Herity, who is producer and co-founder of Pink Kong Studio. So thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so I think a good place to start would be to kind of go down the panel. Uh, just uh, briefly introduce yourselves and tell us a bit about your company and um, the origins of the company as well. So, Doc. Uh, so, as, as I was actually in college with John. There was a lot of us that were in the same class, and I was one of those who actually, I didn't graduate. I got kicked out a year before John. Um, so, I, I literally couldn't get a job anywhere. And um, so, we had to invent our own jobs. And so, we, myself and Cahill Gaffney formed Brown Bag. We had already been making short films together in college, and that's really what we wanted to do, was just make short films, and we were a pair of, flighty artists who went out there, and um, there, was, there wasn't even an Irish film board at the time. This is back in 1990, uh, it was before 1994, and just when the film board was setting up. And uh, so we really learned as we went, and we slowly started building stuff up, and um, we now, I mean, we now nearly have 270 people in Dublin, and um, we're doing six productions uh, with uh, Amazon, with Nickelodeon, with Disney, we're doing two of our own shows with, um, one is Angela's Christmas, a half hour special uh, based on a book by Frank McCourt. And we're doing Sadie Sparks, which is created by Brona O'Hanlon and they're doing a panel after us, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so we're primarily a CG studio now in Dublin. We set up a 2D studio in Manchester. And we have like 65 people there. And Really, we're just, we love what we do, and we love animation, and it's, you know, I think everyone in the room is lucky. If you can get a job doing animation, you'll never work a day in your life, you know? It's great fun, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, you know, just, and we hope we can keep it fun for as long mm -hmm. as we can. And we'll come back to you getting kicked out of college in a moment. Um, <laughs> Rob, tell us a bit about Boulder. Yeah, um, I too was in John's class. It's like a victim's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, was, I was in John's class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so once I kind of graduated, I, kind of, I worked in a few different studios in Dublin, and they all slowly closed down. I was a mysterious for in each one was strange. <laughs> um, so, uh, so for about three years, I was pretty much on the dole, just doing freelance work in character design. And then um, I was introduced to Flash um, back in 99, 98, by this mysterious guy in the laneway. It was very, <laughs> oh wow, what is this thing? So he did, um, so I started on e-cards, uh, because it was e-cards out at the time, but they were, they were being done by kind of like programmers, and not kind of artists and animators. So I did a few cards, and there's a guy in the States, like what we were doing. So he said, well, give us as many as you can do. So we kind of started with one people, two people, three people. And then for the next three years, we did any bit of work we could guess, if it's kind of like e-cards or online sketches or whatever. And then a big kind of break came when uh, we were approached to do a test for Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, which is with Craig McCracken's follow-up show to Powerpuff Girls. Um, we did it, did a test, they liked us, did another one, make sure it wasn't a complete fluke. Um, and then we got the contract, so we went from like six people to 30 people like that. So um, a long baptism of fire followed. Um, but after that, we kind of, we managed to kind of get up and running, and it meant we could actually handle larger projects. So we went from that to El Tigre, to eventually onto Amazing World of Gumball, um, and then more recently, Danger Mouse and Go Jetters, and, and then more recently, we've been acquired by Hasbro of last year. So now we're kind of a full slate of kind of third party projects, but also Hasbro projects like Transformers and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, My Little Pony. And so the next couple of years, we're expanding at some pace, um, and we're about to start our first full CG feature film, theatrical feature. Mm -hmm. um, so at the moment, we're, we're based in Dublin City Centre, and we're 165 at the moment. Um, like everyone here, we're all on the lookout for talent mm. and, and, and build the future. Yeah. So between you and Dara, we've got two companies who, you know, 
started then to uh, been acquired by big North American companies. So uh, Brown Bag was acquired by Nine Story Media Group a couple of years ago now, was it 2000? A year and a half 15, ago, yeah. yeah. And obviously, like you mentioned, so Hasbro now owns Boulder. Yeah. Uh, Alex, let's go to you and uh, tell us a bit about Giant Animation. Um, well, Giant was uh, founded by myself and um, Sean Mullen, Ben Harper, and Daniel Spencer um, about five, officially five years ago, but unofficially, Giant's been going for about seven years. We, uh, we all went to college uh, in Ballyfermot, but we were kind of uh, one year apart from each other. Um, so uh, when, we, when we all kind of went through college and we graduated, uh, myself, Ben and Sean, we, uh, we set up actually in uh, Sean's bedroom. It's your typical kind of like startup story. We literally worked in his bedroom for like a, for about a year. And we, uh, we started off just doing um, TV ads and uh, bits and pieces here and there. And then after all, we decided to kind of uh, take the next step and we kind of got a, a studio space. And uh, the three of us kind of joined forces then with uh, Daniel Spencer at the time, who's uh, He's kind of done a, a few things. He's set up peg bar and stuff like that. And then we, um, we moved into our studio space as a team of four. And then we started to uh, shop our, our name around Dublin to kind of get ad work from all the ad agencies, which is, uh, that's tough. Like, I don't know if anyone's done it, like, but it's uh, like we literally went door to door and we kind of like uh, knocked, knocked on every single agency's door and kind of like basically did a stand up pitch to about 20 agencies over two weeks. Uh, just to get working because nobody knew our name and nobody knew what Giant was, uh, which is tough as well because you're kind of sitting there and your phone is ringing and you're not getting emails and you have to kind of, you know, make make a bit of, a bit of wave to kind of to get people to kind of you know come looking for work. So we, we kind of did that for a while, um, and what happened then was nobody kind of called us for a long time. And then we got one we got you know one email and another email and then we started to do ads. And then when you start to do ads and uh, work with people, then they eventually start to trust you and you kind of like, you start that way. Um, so we, we did that for a while and then we kind of like, uh, we experimented a bit with doing some kind of animation stuff for games, uh, like creating assets or doing uh, animation cycles and stuff like that, just to kind of keep keep money coming in. And uh, our, our big break came when um, when Bowler asked us to, to pitch with them for uh, a new CG show that uh, BBC, like CBBS were kind of uh, putting up for for open pitches, so we uh, we kind of um, put our heads together, kind of come up with how we wanted to approach or how we how we saw the show, and we um, flew over to Manchester and we did kind of like a, a Dragon's Den style uh, kind of 15 person pitch, like another stand up pitch with Rob doing a, a song and dance, kind of showing all the storyboards. Um, but uh, we 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 did that, like we we did a great pitch, and then we kind of went through a few rounds, and then eventually the show came our way. Uh, and that was, uh, for Giant, that was our big big chance to kind of show what we could do because we got to, basically, we got to direct, you know, put our direct directorial style on the show. We got to kind of develop it from, it was very, very much just a, 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 a small flash game that had kind of a few broad ideas in there. And then we had to kind of, uh, along with Boulder, kind of tasked with kind of expanding that and, and figuring it out for, for a show format. So that was a, a huge learning curve. Uh, and overnight went from four people to about 45 people. And um, doing 50 to 11 minute episodes was uh, a huge learning curve. But like, I mean, we did it and we kind of got through it and, and, and great experience. Like, and we kind of delivered it in the end. And uh, we're kind of now at this stage, we're kind of moving, I suppose, moving forward to try and find the next, uh, the next show. But we're also kind of, uh, we've started to kind of carve out a space for, for ourselves to continue developing the ideas that we had started in the very beginning, but had to kind of slow down because we needed to put our name out there to bring service work in to obviously make uh, money come into the studio. But we've now come back to our IP and we've been recently gone to Cartoon Forum to pitch uh, one of our shows called Creepers that we, um, that we put a lot of time into. And now we're kind of hopefully going to follow up next Cartoon Forum with our new, uh, our new IP and hopefully make it a, a routine, go back every year. Mm -hmm. mm. And last but not least, Nick. <coughs> yes. So my name is Neve Herity. I am the co-founder and producer of Ping Kong Studios. Uh, we're a Dublin-based animation studio, predominantly doing 2D animation. Uh, the studio is going into its fourth year now, so we're you know we're we're the new kids on the block really um, from from animation Ireland perspective. Um, 
Yeah, and it was set up by myself and the creative director, Aoife Doyle. Um, so Aoife went to Ballyfermot years and years ago and did classical animation. Um, finished up her, her uh, diploma was at the time and all of the studios decided to leave Dublin. Um, the Don Bluths and, uh, and that then kind of just left Dublin and so she was kind of going, oh crap, what am I going to do now? And just, you know, just did whatever jobs kind of came about. Um, and then things started picking up again um, with the likes of Boulder and, and, and Brown Bag and, and Jam and stuff, um, setting up studios. And so Aoife decided that, look, at, I need to, I really need to start learning about the digital side of things and not just, you know, pencil and paper type of stuff because digital is the future and all that kind of stuff. So she went back to Ballyfermid and did the degree in digital animation. Um, then Aoife went and did her tour around all of the different studios in, uh, in Dublin and Kilkenny and whatnot. Um, and really kind of wanted, had a, a real urge and, and, and a want to set something up herself. So Eva came to me, um, and Eva's my wife as well. So you know, there's we're we're not just married in company; we're we're also actually married as well. Um, and so Eva came to me and said, "Look, I want, I really, really want to do this." And I was in event management at the time, and I turned around and said, "Well, I have absolutely no idea about animation. You know, it's not my background. You know, I can't draw, I can't do this." And Eva said, "Look, it's, you know, it's." The same skill set that you currently have um, with event management production, you know, it, it's the same thing that you need to be able to do. It's very, very transferable. So I kind of, you know, I was like, mm, yeah, maybe. And, and it was always something that I wanted um, was to have my own company. Um, it was always an ambition of mine. I hadn't got a clue what that was going to be. Um, and it turns out it's animation. Um, so we decided to, to set up and, and we said, look, at okay, let, let's, let's bite the bullet and do it. And we worked very similar in the middle bedroom for a good six months. Um, before we got a studio space. Um, so after six months, I was bringing in some jobs and, you know, it was more, it felt more like I was Aoife's agent at that stage because I can't do any of the artwork. I can't, you know, do any of the actual <laughs> animation. Um, and, you know, we're coming up with ideas and, and trying to figure it all out and trying to, you know, where are we going to get some contracts from? But it, it almost felt like I, I was bringing in the work for Aoife to do. So we were like, okay, well, this isn't what we want to be doing. What we want is we want a studio um, and we want to grow it and we want to develop it. So we kind of bit the bullet and terrifyingly um, got, a, got a studio space in Dublin uh, beside the docks up by the Point Village. And we were absolutely cacking it because, you know, you're kind of, you're in the middle bedroom and that's all nice and comfortable and, and everything like that. And then you have to start paying rent um, for, you know, for every month in, in, in a place and you have to start buying software and you have to start getting in computers. But we did it anyway. Um, and now we've been in that space probably three years. It'll be three years in September um, where, where we're in the actual studio space. And from there, we, you know, we, we've been doing smaller promotional videos, corporate videos, some advertising stuff, some animation for games. Um, so a lot of service work, um, adverts, that kind of thing, just to get the money in, to keep the lights on, to be able to start building up the, the crew um, and, you know, kind of try and get a core team together that, that we want and that has the same vision um, 
for, for the studio. But alongside of that, we're developing our IP. So last year we pitched to RTE um, for the animated short schemes and we were successful in, in getting the, the funding. So we put together a two minute um, short called Urban Tales. And from that, it, it was great fun and we were obviously over the moon to get it. And it was like, you know, this is our first like real kind of Ping Kong work um, that, that we can kind of put out there. So we decided, okay, well, let's be clever about this. Let's use the idea and bring that to Cartoon Forum um, and develop it into something bigger. Um, and that's what we did. So we brought the, the pitch to Cartoon Forum and we've developed it into an international series. Um, so now, at the moment, what, what's happening is I'm going around all the different marketplaces to try and, try and get it funded, um, and there's a lot of interest in it. We have a Canadian co-producer on board, um, so we're talking to the Canadian broadcasters, I'm talking to some of the American broadcasters, you know, the Europeans and that kind of thing. Um, but it's still early days, you know, it's still in that kind of early finance point. Um, so if anyone has uh, any money out there, uh, you're more than welcome <laughs> to come talk to me later on. Um, you know, and with that as well, we're, we're also doing, doing a frameworks as well this year. So we're doing our own work, but also doing some service work to keep the lights on, keep, keep people fed basically um, at the moment. Um, so that's kind of, you know, how we've, we've started to grow up. I don't feel that you know, we have our big break just yet. Um, we're also, well, we are actually doing a TV series um, at the moment. It's an adult comedy um, that, we're, that we're doing for RTE. Um, it's, not our, it's not our property, it, it's another producer's property. They're a live action um, studio and they came to us to say, will you do the animation production on it? So, I mean, that's been fantastic as well. So we've gone from a crew of three, really, um, over the last, year and a half to and, and after kind of we size up and down when we need to to now there's 15 to 20 people in the studio which for us you know it, it, it's quite a quite it's I feel it's the next kind of step stepping stone to um, selling our, our, our company in 20 years is it is that roughly around when we sell it yeah okay <laughs> so Dara, how would you advise companies like Neves um, who are balancing this, you know, the service work with the developing their own IP, um, how would you advise them to, to have that balance? Should they be focusing more on service work um, to kind of reach a, a certain level and then begin, you know, developing their own IP or should, should IP come first? Uh, no, I think, I think, as Neve said, you have to keep the lights on. You have to make sure there's work coming in. I think service work is hugely important because it's, it's quicker to get in. If you can grab the gig, it's sort of straight away. Somebody else has already gone through all the trouble of sorting out the legal and the finance and all that, which takes years. Yeah. So, like, IP is it's great, but uh, I was having this conversation with, with Clint from... Um, uh, uh, last night with uh, Lighthouse Pictures and we were saying like some people see IP as more romantic in a way because it's your own project but that's really only for the people that own the IP for everybody else working on the project they just want to work on cool work and yeah. they want to just do really good animation and so I, I don't I, I think service is very important when you're starting off I mean ultimately IP should be your your aim but I think a healthy mixture is always good mm -hmm. okay um, and obviously the tax break um, it would be remiss not to mention the tax break and the effect that has had on the local production industry. Um, what stage is that at, at the moment? So it's 32%. Um, are there, are there, is there a kind of um, demand for it to be increased amongst the Irish animators? Or yes, are you please. quite. <laughs> and is that, is that feasible at any point? I'd pass it on to the people who know better than I. <laughs> Um, I, don't, I don't think there's a, a need to, to raise, I mean, like, I mean, it'd be great like if it was raised, but I mean, I don't think you really, it really does need to get raised, because it, it's a good card to play when you go mm. uh, to the markets. I mean, it's just, you, you know, you kind of can go there with, it, with some, you know, if, you're, if your company has a good kind of uh, shop front, like a good showreel, or, or you've got like a good track record, and then you have that kind of 
32 percent to kind of like put into the into the conversation when you have the meeting. I mean, it always helps. So, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's helped us a lot. Like we're yeah, already competing fun. with yeah. the the rest of Europe. Um, we, I think we have one of the highest tax breaks in Europe. Um, the next the next country uh, to Ireland globally is probably Canada. Um, <coughs> so. I mean, that's why we decided to go with a Canadian co-production as well, mm -hmm. um, because we have our tax break and, and, and also they're really good. But I think what's important about here is that you know, the Canadian tax break, for mm -hmm. instance, you have to be Canadian to qualify sure. for it. Everybody working on it yeah. has to be Canadian. Yeah. In Ireland, it's just about the money spent here. Yes. So yeah. it's, in Brown Bag, we have something like 30 different nationalities yeah. in the studio yeah. now. We have people from all over the world. <laughs> and they bring new perspectives, yeah. new skills. Yeah. They inspire each other. And I think it's made for a really healthy industry yeah. here. Yeah. Whereas Canada has become just so Canadian. Sure. Um, just as a, just <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, well, Canada was already a more diverse country than Ireland to start with, yeah. so we we needed a bit more blood in our country, yeah. which is great, you know, and it's um, I just think it's done great for the industry bringing in all this talent from mm -hmm. from all over the world. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's important though because um, it, it it does play a huge a huge factor in like kind of uh, creating a good studio environment or even like. Um, like you're saying, Dara, getting like different uh, perspectives on on like if you if you've been living with like a show for a long time, if it is your own IP, uh, and it's all the same people kind of working on it. Like when you start to bring other people like from all around Europe into your studio, you get like a whole wealth of talent and kind of like just different ideas that you would never get like if, if it was mm. all the same people from from the same country. Like uh, so, it is great to to have that there, mm -hmm. and that, that's like that's a big kind of selling. Uh, Point as well to when you say, you know, we're we're open for business. We can we can take in your project, like, and we can also hire people from all around Europe. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it play, plays a, a big a big part when you go to these markets. And uh, yeah, it's proving very attractive to international companies. Certainly, I was I wrote a news story earlier this week about a UK company uh, that partnered <laughs> with an Australian company, and they're going to launch a studio in Dublin mm -hmm. uh, later this year, I think, which is a great opportunity for. Mm -hmm. For animators, gingerbread. gingerbread, gingerbread. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's going to be called. Um, so, what challenge does that pose to to you guys who are running businesses here in Dublin to to have more companies coming in? I mean, I welcome it. Um, obviously, in in Ireland, you know, there's about 22, 23 Animation Ireland members, um, member studios, and uh, like people talk about competition. I really, really don't feel that the Irish studios are necessarily in competition with each other. We come together um, and we support each other and we help each other, which you don't, I mean, maybe you see in some other countries, but you know, we're, we're really good for that. And it means that we can then kind of go out to the, the actual, you know, international marketplace and say, look at Ireland, you know. And um, so having, Things like gingerbread and lighthouse coming on board only, you know, helps our industry in Ireland um, to to kind of be profiled even more. I think. I think about the challenge as well. It's great, um, but the challenge is actually getting the people in, yes. the crew, getting the artists, getting yeah. the talents. The production is fantastic challenges. for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Really it is exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's um, we just need to keep keep that kind of like that talent pool yeah. consistently flowing mm -hmm. uh, and kind of like. You know, making sure the standards are, are always kind of there as well, and um, because that's what makes you know, if you, if you're competing against other companies who can do probably far less price than what, what we can over here, so you need to offer, you know, something bespoke, something you know, almost handcrafted animation that that only that company could do or that individual animator could, could could get. So we're always looking for you know, people with great potential and kind of just passion for it and. You know, just get it and enjoy it, because mm -hmm. uh, that's what makes a project difference and makes it enjoyable as well. Mm. And so, given uh, that you, so, um, so Rob and Dara, you're now part of much bigger entities, um, how has that um, changed the day-to-day -day business at your companies? Uh, well, in our case, it was great because when Nine Story, um, when we joined forces there, they basically said, look, we love what you do, you've got a great reputation, <coughs> keep doing it. I mean, we, we don't want to interf interfere, we want you to run it the way you want to run it. Um, and so they just really trusted us. But what's happened now is um, slowly, like Cahill, my partner, he's been more and more in Canada and he's trying to bring up their systems and their operations and kind of try to instill more of the spirit that we have in Ireland over in Toronto. 
and and then just recently I've become creative director for the whole group. So now I uh, work with all the directors in Canada, and um, so I give notes on all of their shows as well as all of our own. And so it's really interesting. So as, while they bought us, we're kind of tasked with bringing up the creative in Canada, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And Rob, being owned by one of the world's biggest toy makers? Yeah, we get free toys, which is great. <laughs> um, come to Boulder, you'll get free toys. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of the same as what Star was saying, because they, they, when, they came, when they approached us, it wasn't, they were looking for a studio that um, they could bring, they could bring some a creative flair and taste to their projects. Um, so obviously, when, when, when you're approached with a big, a big corporation, a company like that, you're kind of like, I know, what's the, there's something going on here, like, you know, what's the catch? Um, but actually, there wasn't, what it was is, basically, they wanted us to bring kind of our own kind of sensibilities to their project. So, I mean, it's amazing, because we're basically giving the keys to the world of Transformers, and say, what would you do with Transformers? How would you reboot Transformers? Which is amazing, like, it's every, you know, geeks, Fantasy, the kind of like, oh my God, I can, I can, I can play around Optimus, play around Optimus Prime, but um, yeah, you could, you could, um, <laughs> but uh, so what, what's great as well because we're talking about service work as well, service work versus kind of IP work, service work over the years, a lot of projects we did, all the kind of the the, the, the front end pre-production would have been done overseas, so Boulder would mainly do kind of like the animation and, and the backgrounds and the final components, which is great. Um, but you're always kind of itching to get in at the storyboard stage and the character design stage and the concept stage. And Air Force Real Proper Taste that was on, was on Danger Mouse with BBC. And that was like, you know, for me, that was the most pleasurable experience ever in my professional career. So you, it, wasn't, it wasn't RIP, but it felt like it because we had such creative kind of freedom and, like, and we had our fingerprints all over us. And what's great about the Hasbro projects is the exact same, that we're in from script to post all the way through. So and it means that we can offer people in the studio, you know, someone who was a background artist is now a concept designer. Someone who was an animation director is now an animation, or who is now a director. Um, so because we have more, we've more projects, we can actually move people around and also the security there, I mean, one of the, once you've been boss, I mean, you can offer people like, you know, four or five year contracts, mm -hmm. which is kind of unheard of animation, mm. um, which is great. So it's kind of, it's just security. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, that constant flow of work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I was going to say as well that the thing about service and IP, it's that people think if you're working on your own IP, you get to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't. Mm -hmm. if, if you're working with a partner, they will try to shape your IP for their channel or for what they need. But, and people think when you're doing service, you don't have creative input, but you yeah. do. I yeah. mean, they bring you their project and they say, how would you make it better? Yeah. So you get a lot of input into it. Mm -hmm. So they're both really, like, they are both really creative and a lot of fun, you know? Yeah, there's pros and cons. I mean, like, if, if, if it's your IP and it goes through the roof, it gets, a, that's like, you know, financially, it's, you, you know, that's what everyone wants. Um, but then also you can be you can be pitching an idea for years like you know it's never and let's be honest it's quite rare that that happens it is it's know? yeah it's it's one yeah it's it's like you know it's very rare, rare a Peppa Pig or a, you know um, the Simpsons like, uh, everybody Simpsons, wants to be the next I know, Simpsons yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> um, so if you can kind of like you know get the creative from the creative aspect if you can get that creative buzz where it happens to do the hard slog yeah. <laughs> three years ahead of us um, it's it's beneficial as well and key to all this is relationships with broadcasters. Um, so what tips would you give to companies that maybe that don't have a track record, that are, are just starting out, um, you know, when they're pitching to a, a Netflix or a Disney or a, a BBC, what, what would be the main things you'd advise them to do? Persist. Mm. Keep knocking on doors, you know, and, and eventually if you keep showing up, they think, oh, okay, mm -hmm. they're here for the long run. We'll, we'll, we'll listen, you mm -hmm. know, but I, I don't, and if your project is good enough, they'll listen straight away, but sometimes, like, we had to knock on doors for years. You know, so it took a long time. Um, the Oscar must have helped. <laughs> it did, yeah. It, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what, it gets you in the door. Mm -hmm. But people think, oh my God, you get nominated for an Oscar, you've made it. You haven't really. I mean, we, you know, we didn't let it get to our heads and we realized there's still a lot of hard work to be built on the back of that. But um, yeah, no, it is all about getting that big break. You know, mm -hmm. and, it, and it just takes a while and it takes, and you have to, you have to work hard, you mm -hmm. know, you really do. To go on to the, the marketplaces, um, I mean, this was probably my first year of a full run of all of the markets. Uh, before the last year, I was going to a couple of them and I was picking and choosing because they're quite expensive to go to. Um, but, 
yeah, this was my first year of, of doing all of them. Started, you know, CMC in July, then Cartoon Forum, then MIP, then Cartoon Connection, then Kids Screen, you know, and I, I kind of feel now that the, the network that I'm building up is, it's starting to form and come together and like that you just have to keep showing up so and keep you know introducing yourself and talking to people and you know to to be seen um and it's all a relationship building exercise really um but i think go, like going out to those like from i'm, I'm in the same boat as neil like uh, like uh, giant's been around for like nearly seven years but we've only just started um properly attending markets and trying to to kind of integrate ourselves into that uh, system so that we can, um, you know, go further with the company. And um, for me, like, uh, like I, I'm, I'm a creative, like, but uh, I, I've been doing it like so that I can get a grasp of like the other side of things because I think uh, what it, what it's helped me to do is like see both sides of the coin so I can really understand how everything is working. Because mm. for a long time I felt kind of like I was only getting one perspective, uh, which was the creative perspective. And I think like to be able to kind of like have the most influence over your creative. I think you, it's good to, you know, to kind of like go to to the other side and experience it and kind of see how you can use it to kind of direct or shape and form your idea or get it into to where you need it to be. It's and that, good, that's what I've gotten from it anyway. Yeah, it's a good way to get an understanding of what the broadcasters and what the funders are looking for as well. Um, and for you know, for for anyone that's out there that. Is thinking about maybe starting up a, a studio. I would certainly recommend going to them, um, and probably the children's media conference for 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 Ireland anyway, which, um, is, in which is in Sheffield, because it, you know the relatively the tickets aren't that expensive and it doesn't cost that much in comparison to going to Miami for a week. Yeah. You know, uh, which I mean. I, don't mind doing that. Like. Sheffield, Miami. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm from Yorkshire, so well, I can say, no I can say it, that. Like, but uh, you know, it's it's and even just it's a very creative um, market as well and chilled out. You know, very kind of same vibe as, as this. Um, no, but Miami. I think it's like you have, yeah, to, you have to, uh, you have to do your homework. You have you to do, find yeah. out who everybody yeah, is. Yeah. And, you don't go pitching an adult show to a yes. children's broadcaster. Yeah. Like, know what they do. Yeah. And I think that's what broadcasters hate the most, when somebody yeah. pitches them something and they don't even realize what yeah. they do. You know? yeah. so that's, yeah. that, you and also dressing up as the character, that's a big <laughs> no-no, right? <laughs> Have you ever done that? I have never had to do that. Okay. No. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> You've done that, Robin. Yeah. I'm conscious that we... I don't think we've got a mic yet, but if someone does have a question and they can speak nice and loud, then we can take a question from the audience. There are any. Got one here. So if you could um, introduce yourself and then yeah, speak quite loudly. My name is Mark. Uh, I was just wondering the day-to-day -day running as a producer. Is it all phone calls and emails, or is there does it vary? Producer, you know, what's the day-to-day -day running? Yeah. Um... Just in case anyone couldn't hear. So the question was: Is the day-to-day -day running of a production company or phone calls and emails or, or is there other? other yeah, thing? I mean, for for me, I'm not really coming from the creative side. I'm coming from the business side. That was my background, um, and that is what we feel makes Art Studio kind of ha ha has that bit of a, a strength. That you know, we were very strategic in in kind of the planning and, and that kind of stuff. So most of my day to day is is emails and, and phone calls and stuff. Um, but what will happen is Aoife and Leo will go off and they'll they'll do their kind of creative brainstorms, you know, every yeah, they, they, they go off and do their creative thing. Um, <laughs> and and it was me, myself and Aoife at first and you know I was saying to her, look as I'm I'm I do have a creative mind as well, like I, I was in marketing and, and PR and stuff, so I understand kind of the creative process. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not the ideas person. Um, and it was kind of torture for me at the start because I was like, oh, Jesus, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe we do this, maybe we do that. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, and then we brought Leo on board. Um, and Leo is a, was a good friend of ours. He was in college with Aoife. 
and Leo's very creative as well. So they go off and do their, their creative thing. Um, and then they'll bring me in and kind of pitch to me effectively, you know, um, and more so like this is, this is what we're thinking, this is what we're thinking. And generally I kind of go, that's great, yeah, love it, or no, that's crap. You know, let's, let's do, do something else, maybe let's think about it this way. And at that point I'll come in to, to the creative bus yeah, most, most of my day-to-day -day would be spreadsheets and emails and, you know, just making sure that the business side of things is running um, and that people know who we are and, you know, connecting with the local enterprise. Um, we're a local enterprise client um, and, you know, making the connections then with Enterprise Ireland as well and just making sure that the business side of things is is solid because if that falls to pieces, you know, you kind of you're screwed. Yeah, but I, I think there's different flavors of yes, producers absolutely. as well. I mean, there's some that are phone yeah. calls and emails all day, and then some. And Rob, you're probably in the same boat as me. I spend all my day reading scripts and looking at animatics and working with other directors. So, and my role is to make sure they're they're not going outside the scope of the show, or they're writing things that we can't produce on the budget. So I'm I'm still producing, but looking at it from a very creative point of view. Yeah. So it's so it's, there's different flavors. Absolutely. Um, obviously, the a key to a healthy local market is a healthy local broadcaster. Um, and there seem to be conflicting reports about RTE and what it was doing with its children's department. Um, but how is what's happening there, how is that affecting the business? Or are your companies now so international focused that, that necess necessarily not having um, a local broadcaster that is as committed to children's content um, as it once was um, isn't as uh, necessarily as bad as it could be? Well, I mean, I think RG are still focused on children's content. And there was a session there with them I think it was last week, um, you know, and they were kind of getting the producers um, in, 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 a, in a location in, in Dublin to just kind of say, look, at we're, we're still here. We're still wanting good content for Irish children. Um, and from an animation point of view, um, I mean, I don't really think it affects the animation studios too much because animation was always outsourced to mm -hmm. the independents, really, um, or you know it was it, w it was bought in. Um, so from from my personal point of view, it doesn't really. Uh, I don't I don't believe that it affects the the animation studios. Um, See, I, I think since day one we've always had to look outside yeah. Ireland. Yeah. So it, it, we've always <coughs> been internationally focused, and I think that's sharpened us. And yeah. And it means when we, now it, it always helps to have the support of your local broadcaster because if somebody's in the States or the UK, they want to know that, okay, has this been at least signed off at home? Mm. There's somebody supporting this? And I mean, RTE still do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's a good help to have. Mm -hmm. But it's I think financially, yeah, yeah. It doesn't make a, it doesn't make a break it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, also, like, okay, so RTE are now going to be outsourcing the majority of their, their live action stuff. That's actually opened up doors for me personally. You know, for Art Studio, we're already talking to um, people that were working in RTE um, that are now kind of going, okay, right, well, I need to find, you know, a, a partner in, in, in getting the, the stuff that I was working on, you know, back into, back into RTE. So, like, that's kind of been beneficial um, personally for, for us because we're talking to people now that, you know, we might be doing, thinking about doing things with. And what opportunities in terms of um, internship programs uh, mm -hmm. are, are your companies running, um, if, if any, at the moment? Um, I think, like, uh, for Giant, like, we're, we're uh, now coming into a stage where we want to try to get a good structure into the studio where we can start to take it or, you know, have like an internship program or like a, a mentorship kind of program. Um, but it, it, it does take a lot of commitment and a lot of mm. time and effort to kind of make sure that it, it, it's worthwhile for, for people coming in and for, for the studio. So we're kind of, we're working with, or we're, we'll, we'll be working with Screen Training Ireland to, mm. to kind of uh, find the right mm. structure for us, 
for you guys, it's uh, you. You could probably start to do it straight away because you have well, it's like weird actually because we we we, we it's, it's super useful because we, we used to do it for years like you know and we had to stop literally because of space there was literally no more desks we mm. could we could put someone in like you know but um and but when we did do that I mean there's many many times we have someone come you know, like probably like fourth year student from like Don Leary and uh, and he'd be with us for like three months. And then you know, four years later, they're working. It's just it's great, it's great actually to spot people and see people early, and, see them de- and it's great to see them develop as well as artists. Um, but um, yeah, so because we're in the moment, we're in the process of kind of like uh, moving premises, and so the idea is that we'll actually we'll plan to have a, a, a strategy for internships as well and scholarships as well, and working with the colleges um, to do that. So that's kind of part of. I think that. animation and skillnet do a great job as well, though. Um, you know, with the the bridge program, and, and they also do uh, the VFX and animation trainee program, which we've been involved in. And you know, it, it is about space, and it, you know, it's about capacity um, for for us. Um, but from the the bridge, uh, we we had we have a, an animator um, and a creative that has kind of stayed with us um, all the way all the way through, and is, is back in with us now to. To be doing the the RT um, show, so I mean, I think Skillnet, what they're doing is is fantastic. I'll just uh, Alex, I actually think you know you, you think it's easier to do an internship in a bigger studio. We actually found mm. it more difficult, really? and we dropped the ball, admittedly, over the last few years, and we didn't we didn't do it as well as we should have. But we just launched this year. We just uh, are actually just this week. We have four intern positions: one in production, one in as a CG generalist. Uh, 2D design and storyboard revisions and so if you want to check our website they're up there now and I think it's like a six month paid internship and if you don't get a job at the end of it then we failed so that's uh, that's the goal do we have any questions from the audience time for one more uh, uh, okay. uh, yes with the Mohican <laughs> Fabulous. The, the, million, <laughs> the million dollar question. What was it like to sell your companies? I'll, 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 I'll no, start. I mean, I, yeah, I, to be honest, I felt we would got to a certain stage and we needed to grow beyond that. And uh, I felt the time was right. It's like you're raising a kid and then you're sending them off to college or something like that. <laughs> But it's we had. But what's super important is finding the right partner. Mm. And we actually did talk to a few different people, and we had a lot of different options. And in the end, you know, we went out, we met all the people at Nine Story, we really liked them, hung out with them at Annecy, did a, you know, did our due diligence. We it took about a year of negotiation to get the whole thing done. It, it didn't happen overnight. I mean, it took a long time. And you know, we got a lot of advice, and we had to be sure it was the right decision because as. As they, they, it happens a lot that somebody buys another company and w- within 100 days, everybody's gone. Mm. They, they, mm. they get rid of everybody. And we were told that you prepared that it, within 100 days you could be gone. And we took the chance, and, um, and, but it's worked out really well. But it, I mean, it's nerve wracking, and in a way it is. I, I think it's something that you start, like myself and Cahill started Brown Bag, but at a certain point it got so big that it didn't really feel like ours anymore. It felt like it belonged to a lot of people anyway. So um, I don't know. For us, it felt it just it felt right. It's very similar, really. I mean, it's it is weird because it's like it's kind of like he's a little baby, like you know, and you see the baby grow up, and, and uh, so it's weird when someone wants to, you know, buy your buy your baby. Buy your baby. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. But um, it's illegal. It's illegal. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, it's the same as well because we because you have to really kind of think about what you're doing, like you know, and because you're not. It's not just it's about staff and like the future and you know it, it, with the security that's there. And but also it's kind of the projects we have because we really look at the projects that were coming our way because it's great having security, but it's not. It's not great if, just, if they're awful projects and you know like you you're just looking down five years with like doing some stuff that you don't really want to do, um, but. It was kind of what we would get out of it, you know, creativity wise, also financial wise. But um, but again, like you said, I mean, it was long. It was up, yeah. It was like a year, kind of the whole the whole negotiations and back and forth, like you know. So I just thought it would never end. Um, 
But, uh, you have to keep it top secret as well. I think, yeah, yeah, I'm time. really <laughs> crap at keeping secret. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll for a pint for like about a year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's uh, it's very much the same. Yeah, you just kind of need to be kind of sure you're doing the right thing, like you know, because you don't want to look back in five, six, ten years and just kick yourself for, mm -hmm. for doing it. And um, because the thing is, like, say you build up something that you're really proud of, and and it's and that's built on that's built upon the talent. And, within the studio and you have to do it right by them like you know um, so and it's also to make sure that like I said we had a, we kept our individuality and we kept the name and we were basically we were still an independent studio and that we were doing like other projects outside so Hasbro which is re usually important to us and, and them as well um, so it's kind of like we're kind of best of both worlds in one mm -hmm. sense like you know well I'm afraid that's all we've got time for but I'd like to thank the panellists and yeah thanks for, thanks for coming Thank you.